Podcast City Network. Listener discretion is advised. It is time to play. You're listening to the Everett Lee Show. Let's go! A shot of entertainment to the head. No doubt. Sit back, relax, put your drinks up, and enjoy the entertainment. Okay. okay. Now we come to the payoff. Let's rock. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Everett Lee Show, Slamming Thursday edition with Everett Lee and the Chris Rose. Want to give a shout out to everyone that tunes in each and every Thursday night right here on the Everett Lee Show Facebook page, and we got an action-packed, star-stunning podcast tonight. Does that sound about right, Chris? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You sound. Um, (laughs) Oh my goodness! You sound. You sound excited. You sounded excited. (laughs) Well, I can't wait to get in and shit on Raw this week. I can't wait to shit all over them. Except there's a few things that went on that was great. yeah, but I'm happy to be here. Man. It's been a pretty good week with NXT and AEW. Yeah, yeah, uh, it has. Uh, it has. Ready, ready to get started, and uh, yeah, it's been been a good week. So you're ready to to uh, sit back and uh, drinking a little bit of the bubbly and get we about to get stupid, <laughs> right? And get started. All right, man. You want to crap all over? You want to crap all over a Raw tonight, right? Right. I do. <laughs> you do. What a big one on them. A big one. Should we give it a roll here? Yeah, we can dive right in. Right- is, is that how you're feeling about uh, this past uh, week's Raw right there? You feeling just a little bit of uh, <laughs> just... <laughs> Yeah, past couple of weeks. Um, it's just, uh, you know, build, the build to Survivor Series has been, you know, it is what it is. And, you know... They start off raw with a Becky Lynch promo, just like last week. Um, the Iconics come out, do their thing. Uh, it's just the same, same old, same old. Charlotte and Becky in a tag team match with a tag team. And then Samoa Joe made an entrance during the promo. and Yeah. Nothing was explained properly. Nothing was explained, you know, like we need it to be. And they just, honestly, this match didn't mean anything to me because I knew that Becky and Charlotte was going to, you know, win until Jessamyn Duke, Shayna Baszler, and Maria Sapphire came out to invade Raw. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought Good. Um, it, it was fine. Finally, they invade Raw with Shayna Baszler's group, and that's what I kind of liked about that. Um, right. I honestly, was like just looking through my phone during the match until I saw Shayna Baszler and all of them come out. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, the first segment was what it was to me. Um, yeah. I do like that 
see women invading on the show, though. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It was just kind of eh to me. <laughs> yeah, it, it, um, it just... It didn't. It didn't serve it because I'm almost at the point now where this invasion angle is just run its course, man. Because you expect it now, you know. You expect it. You expect them to just show up, beat someone down, and if you notice during the invasion so far, it's been NXT invading Raw, NXT invading SmackDown, NXT. Invading, invading, they're invading both brands. That's basically the whole one. And if you noticed, who's who's been carrying the invasion angle lately? It's been, you know, the women, right? Oh yeah, yeah, they've been carrying it. Yeah. NXT, NXT yeah. I know N- NXT has double duty if you really look at it because they got War Games on Saturday and they got Survivor Series on Sunday. So, I mean, there you go. But um, I just want to throw that in there. If There's you noticed that, uh, a hodgepodge going on on NXT. There was a lot of that too. But overall, NXT was a good show. But we'll get to that later on. But um, right. yeah, there's a lot going on with NXT. They got War Games plus Survivor Series. So they're going to work double duty a lot, and that's going to be insane for them. Um, oh yeah, yeah, it has been. They they built Survivor Series around the women this year, and that's just how I feel about it. That's how I feel about the whole thing. Uh, but um, I mean, we saw the Authors of Pain finally do something on Rob besides do their uh, sit down interview promo style. Yeah, they man. Attack Hawkins. The uh, they went. To Hawkins and Ryder doing an interview after the uh, beatdown from the NXT women. Um, mm-hmm. Then ha- then Office of Pain returned. So we're finally going to see them do some stuff on Monday Night Raw. We haven't seen them in quite some time. So uh, that's going to be very interesting to see what Office of Pain do in the near future. What do you think about Office of Pain? What, what are some teams you would like to see them feud with? I'd I'd like to see them actually I'd like to see the authors of pain feud with the Viking Raiders. I'd like to I'd like to see that. Yeah. I I'd definitely like to see them feud with the Viking Raiders. I like to I would say the revival, but the revival's on SmackDown. I would definitely definitely like to like to see them feud with them, the Viking Raiders. I, that's about the only team the I can Raiders. Yeah. Viking Raiders are becoming that They'd be face tag team. The crowd really likes the Viking Raiders and Office of Pain being badass hills. That would be a good uh that'd be a good rivalry. Two four big men in there slugging it out. Yeah, uh-huh. I'll, I could see that. That was the one I was gonna say too. Right. Yeah, that would be a really good uh, that would be really good matches for them. Mm-hmm. We have a we have a comment already up on the thing here from uh Dennis. He says AEW didn't even sell out a 6,000 seat arena this past week in Indianapolis. Figured it would be a sellout since it is new product. North Carolina and West Virginia was low attendance, also. Yeah, they're they've uh, yeah they yeah they're they're starting to attendance is starting to drop. I want to throw it out there. Yeah, it's it's dropping because you know the. People wanted to see what the new kid on the block is doing. They see what the new kid on the block's doing, and now there are people that sticking around is watching AEW. People that's not, they're sticking more towards WWE and other wrestling programming, though. But that's just uh, something that I figured with what was reported this week about that. But authors of pain, Viking Raiders. Um. Yeah, that that would be really good. Yeah, and AEW and Time uh, when they build their fan base, they they are really new right now. Um, that's why they are doing the. They are the smaller venues than Raw and SmackDown. I mean, mm-hmm. 
They, they are trying, I and mean, that's how NXT, NXT's venues are at Full Sail University in the smaller venue, and I kind of like that feel. You can hear the crowd a lot louder, and you don't have to dim the lights like AEW does to make it look like they do sell out. Yeah. Um, because that's what they dim the lights, just like, you know, WCW did in the early 90s to make it look like they had a full house. Mm-hmm. Um, before uh, H- Hogan made the jump to WCW, that company was struggling. It was. And you can listen to the podcast about that. The early 90s in WCW was really, really bad. Um, but, yeah, AEW will, I mean, they do sell out their pay-per-views. But yes. as far as the TV, one TVs go, yeah, um, I mean, they'll get better in time. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on the show that a lot of people don't like. But then you got Chris Jericho, you got Cody, um, MJF. There's some draws on the show. Just give it a little more time. You know, AEW will pick it back up. Mm-hmm. It will. It'll take. It'll take some time. It. Yeah. Yeah. It de- um, definitely will. The OC came out and did a promo. Yeah. Um, you know, basically about the invasion and you know, everything that's been going on, and then you got uh, Carl Anderson taking on Humberto Carrillo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's that that was pretty interesting, wasn't it? They're they're really pushing him, man. They are with this feud with the OC. Yeah. Yeah. The reason I bring up this whole little little segment and match is that Humberto Carrillo, when he st- starts to get his promo skills down and they um yeah, his promo skills. I mean, this guy's going to be a force to be reckoned with in right in uh, WWE. I mean, he has the move set. Mm-hmm. He, uh, I just think you know they put him with so many other people on the roster at one time. They always have him with the Street Profits. They have him with the Viking Raiders. I mean, right? They they I mean, got to stick him with someone. Keep him safe. Um, yeah, he's a, he's very impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he you know he is. Uh, he put the strap or anything, but man, he's going to be a force in the in the near future. He is. He's really good. Mm-hmm. He he is. He he definitely is going to be a force in in the future. He he definitely is. As the night went on. I would have to say one of the things that I liked out of Monday night was the fact that Rey Mysterio cut a cut a damn good promo. His I I felt his promo, man. I felt it because he's sitting there and he's saying he's going after Brock, no holds bar, which makes makes good sense. And he's sitting there with his bat and he's looking directly in the camera and he's. Basically telling Brock, I'm going to whip your ass. I am going to whip your ass this Sunday at Survivor Series with my little friend. Big guy versus little guy. I want to get people's reaction and comments about the about NXT versus SmackDown versus Raw. I'm going to throw up the call-in number. I'm going to open up the phone lines tonight, man. Let's open up the lines. You'll see right there. 386-206-1595. I want to hear what people have to say tuning in tonight on the Slime of Thursday edition of the Everett Lee Show with Everett Lee and the Chris Rose. I want to hear what people have to say. What they, Which brand is going to win the Survivor Series? That's the question right there. You call in and let us know. Raw, SmackDown, NXT. Let us know tonight right here on the Slam and Thursday edition of the Everett Lee Show. But like uh like you were talking about there, 
I mean, with just throwing that out there. How how do you feel about that promo with Ray talking about you know he's going to whip Brock Lesnar's ass at Survivor Series? Did you feel it? Yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of emotion in the promo. Uh, Rey Mysterio has been in the business a very long time, and he uh, he knows uh, his shit. And that promo was really good. It felt it from the heart. Talking about how he attacked his son, he went after his family. Mm-hmm. Um, I know his bar, Bard match makes it very interesting for Rey Mysterio. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm ready for this match. They have uh, the build to it was strong at first, but past three or four weeks we haven't seen Brock. Nope, and it's kind. Of uh, been put to the wayside, and on Raw the last week or week before, n- neither of the two was on the show. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, this is the best we've seen from the angle in a, in a while. And, yeah, I'm ready for this match. Rey Mysterio versus Brock Lesnar. uh and Rey Mysterio, I mean, he said, now it's all about the WWE Championship now. I mean, that's another thing added to the uh, Rey Mysterio match. Uh, I'm ready for it. I'm ready to see what these guys do Sunday. Yeah, I, I'm ready. I'm definitely I'm definitely ready to see what what they bring and what, what brand brings it because, again... NXT's pulling double duty, man. I mean, they're 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 trying to promote war games. They're trying to promote this invasion. They're trying to. It's just, <laughs> it's it is crazy, man. It is is definitely crazy. And what what gets me is uh, that, like with um, Seth Rollins' reaction here lately. You notice how Seth Rollins, he a lot of people has not giving him the cheers and more booze now as lately. You noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. I did. And, um, you know, that's just, that's just how the fans do. They get tired of, uh, the same old, same old thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just how it is. Um, Seth is a tremendous performer. He is. But Seth, says burn it down a hundred times a night and does the same old thing. He does. And, you know, that's how they treated John Cena that way. They treated Roman Reigns that way. I mean, that's, you know, that's how the fans are. And they just want to see something different in Seth. And, but I was uh, seeing a lot of good things in Seth and Andrade on Raw. Um, they was having a pretty good match, but of course, it was interference by the fucking Lucha House Party. <laughs> I know. Before before you continue, let me uh, throw this up here. We got a comment from uh, Joe from Joe Hamilton. He says, "Absolutely insane time, insane time right now in wrestling. Love what NXT is doing. Excellent, man. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for your the feedback there." Everyone's doing well. Yeah, Joe, uh, NXT's doing really well right now. Huh? Mm-hmm. Ever since they went to USA, I've kind of uh, enjoyed it. I've enjoyed NXT a lot. Yeah. Later on in the show, you'll know why. <laughs> yep, definitely. I did. Definitely. I did um, <laughs> NXT was really good. So was AEW. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely was. But like you were saying, the Lucha, Lucha House Party. Lucha House Party comes out. Really? <laughs> I just put my head down. I was like, seriously, why not have Cesaro, like some badass dude from SmackDown, come out and, you know. I know. I don't know. I know. It, I don't know. It's That's like Cesaro or Sh- and Shinsuke, like have those guys come out. Yeah. Fucking Lucha House Party. Like, I was so into this match, Everett mm-hmm. Lee, and I was really, like, 
There was a lot of good shit in this match. Yeah. Very good match. And, of course, like, some of these matches that are on Raw, SmackDown, NXT, AEW, you know, some fans, you know, they pay to see those crazy matches. And they advertise Andrade and Seth Rollins. Why right. not let them have a clean finish and then you just interfere afterwards? Exactly. I mean, I Exactly. Oh, man, I, just don't. I, I, I don't know either, you can, man. Like you said earlier on the show, they're overdoing the interference and the invasion. We get it. We get it by now. Yeah. Sunday, mm-hmm. the, all the friends are going to go at it. They're going to beat the fuck out of each other. Why not just fucking save it for Sunday? They, I mean, just do it after the matches. Save it for Sunday. We all know what's going to I mean, we all know what Survivor Series is. It's been around for decades. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Ex- exactly. You, you feel the same way. They they played out the invasion thing a little bit too much. I was going to throw this out here, and I want to want to get your get your thought on this. Okay, they will. That's right, Joe. Uh, Joe mentioned that NXT. Is busting their balls. Well, yeah, definitely this weekend are busting their balls. Okay, let me let me take you back right after Crown Jewel with the everything that went happened with the talent trying to get back for Friday Night SmackDown. They flew in the NXT talent. NXT came in. <clears throat> excuse me. NXT talent came in, and they did great on SmackDown promoting the invasion thing. Now, the following week, instead of having people come in and invade and get physical, you should have had people just show up and cut promos, man. Okay? Like Shayna Baszler come in and come in and interrupt someone and come in there and say, I'm, you know, looking for the man. And then cut a promo on Becky. And then have, have on SmackDown... The same thing. She comes in and cuts a promo on Bailey. Okay? And then you have uh, the following, like, Wednesday, Bailey or Becky come in, NXT, and cut a promo, and they're looking for a fight. And, you know, have, you know, like a match, like this like this past week with Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley. I thought that was great. But we'll, we'll talk more about that. And it's just that with... Have them cutting promos back and forth and stuff. They and then when they through the middle right before uh, two weeks, two weeks before the pay per view, have the talent NXT you know invade SmackDown. Okay, all right. Have them invade Raw. Then the following week, building up to it, have Raw like they did with AJ Styles coming in the NXT. And invading there and going after, you know, we had a great main event last week or a couple weeks ago right there, right? With the OC versus, um, you know, Tomaska Champa. I mean, and uh, yeah, it was, and, and just have that and then have it to where SmackDown of Age Raw. And, and it's like, dude, it's like, it's like they're they're invading NXT's invading us. How come you didn't uh, help us out and evade, and then have them inv- you know go after each other, and then just have that last week right before the pay per view have everybody just invade everybody, just have it just one big invasion thing, and in that way you're like okay I'm ready. They built it. I'm ready for Survivor Series. Which brand is going to win this? Does does that not make sense to you? Would you book it like that? I mean, that all sounds really good. Does that sound good My or not? Biggest, I mean, yeah, it does. It's the biggest peeve about me is this, the WWE advertising these big matchups, and then they end like that. I mean, I saw that match advertised three or four days in advance of Andrade and Seth Rollins. If you're going to advertise the match like that, you need to go through with it and not have the fucking Lucha House Party interrupt it. <laughs> Let's play this. All the fucking talent. Lucha House Party. Get stupid. 
if, if, okay, Lucha House Party took on the, the big dude who's been gone forever. I mean, who was that dude who they advertised? He was on NXT. Man, I, I forgot the dude's name, but he, he faced yeah. him in a one-on-three handicap match. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> and Rollins couldn't even be. I yeah. don't know. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I forget. I forget. But yeah, the damn Lucha House Party. <laughs> damn Lucha House Party. And then another thing that got on my nerves was the Kevin Owens and Drew McIntyre match. Another great match. What do you think of that one? I liked it. I liked it. I'm glad KO's back out, man, because I'm glad he's back out because you haven't seen much of him, man. That it's he he put Shane away. That was it. That was it. And okay, Joe on the chat says Lars Sullivan. Okay, that's who it is. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Joe Lars Sullivan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. But, um, yeah, K- KO. You haven't seen him for a while. And he, he's come back, and I'm glad he's starting to come back, though. But I, I liked I liked how it was going, you know, starting out and everything, though. But I don't like basically how Triple H comes out and disrupts a match. Let's have a yeah. water break. Let's have a water break. <laughs> My goodness. Really? Come on. Aaron. First half of the match, I mean, it took them a while to get into it. These guys obviously don't, you know, wrestle each other too much. But, I mean, the intensity got picked up halfway through the match. Right. They did a lot of crazy stuff. McIntyre had a vicious uh, fireman's carry on the apron. Did you see that? I mean, it was yeah. insane. They pulled out all the socks. Kevin was. Owens has one of the best frog splashes for a guy that looks like he does in the business. Pulled out all the stops. I mean, Claymore kicked. Owens got his foot on the ropes. Owens hit a stunner. McIntyre got his foot on the ropes. They was doing, it was a very, very well put together match. And if, yeah, and then, you know, Triple H comes out. Comes out. Then they go to a commercial break when he comes out. Mm-hmm. When they come back from commercial, the match is over. Yeah. <laughs> Who won? Who won the match? Who won the match? They go straight to a promo, and I was just watching the match. What the fuck? <laughs> I know. I know this is just this gets me, this gets me. And then you have the Forgotten Sons and uh, Dominic Di, uh, Diva Kova or uh, whatever, and Damian Priest out there, and he, Triple H doing what 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 he tried to do with Seth Rollins, try to get him to join NXT. You know what I was waiting for to happen? I was waiting for Owens to look at the look at the. Triple H, and he's like, he's like, I understand you're looking out for my best interest, but you know what? I believe what you're doing. You know, with NXT, everything's great and stuff. I was there, but hell, Triple H, you could kiss my ass. <laughs> Boom, stunner. Yeah, and what's that remind you of? <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh uh, yeah, the Austin and promo, and Austin was. I mean, that's what put him on the map. Really, was that you know. The promo that came to the ring, and then when he stunned him, it's like, man, that was the icing on the cake. Yeah. Um, but the whole thing was just, that match is so good. I know, I know. Did, I, I didn't get that wrong at all what the finish was, because I still don't even know. Yeah. All I saw was the come out, commercial break, and then when we come back, McIntyre's no, I don't even see him in the building anymore. <laughs> he went back to I Scotland. <laughs> I think he. Yeah. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah, I know. I know. Ah. Yeah. Now, where's your Randy bit? You got a bunch of bits. The bubbly. Where's your Randy Orton stupid? Stupid. Oh, Where's stupid. That at? Here it is. We're about to get stupid. 
<laughs> you got that. <laughs> you want drinking a little bit of bubbly? <laughs> Guess what I wrote after this in my notes after this segment. What's that? What's that? I now see why all these guys want to leave the company. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, exactly. because I was really into that match. Two of my favorite guys on Raw, Owens and McIntyre, just slugging it out. Man. I know. I just I mean, <sighs> Owens. Owens beat him with the stunner, and then Triple H came down there and done that promo. Why couldn't they just do a simple thing like that? Yeah. Why yeah. does it have to be? Gosh, man, I. I, I know. It's like pulling teeth. It's like pulling teeth watching this stuff sometimes. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. The main event. Thank you. The Viking Raiders versus Randy Orton and Ricochet. Okay. Yeah. This was going really well. This match was going really, really well. And then at, finally, 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 SmackDown was basically like... And they finally invaded Raw after how many freaking damn weeks? How many weeks did SmackDown finally invade Raw, which I talked about weeks ago, weeks ago. They just, God, you know, it just, it it killed me. But then all hell breaks loose at the end, which I was just like, we've seen this before. You had SmackDown, you had NXT come in now. NXT superstars come in from the crowd, surround the ring, and then you had you had the red and the blue versus the yellow, and they're going all back and forth, back and forth, and Raw goes off the air, and it just... What did you think about the ending, how this yeah. ended? Yeah, I mean, we this ending's happened on... Every show, um, it did. It started out. I mean, I knew in my notes I put Viking Raider versus or- Orton and Ricochet before it was even announced. Ricochet. I knew that Ricochet was going to be Randy Orton's partner because mm-hmm. of their history. Yeah, knew it was going to be the the I knew three partner was going to be Ricochet. Yeah, I should have just said Ricochet and Orton versus the Viking Raiders. Yeah, and then saw a little bit. Uh, here's in my notes. Chaos ensues backstage. <laughs> and what do they do? They go to a commercial break. Yeah, I know. We're right in the middle of the... Co- and back to the uh, tag team match. It was going really good. I like the uh, Ricochet and um, one half of the Viking Raiders going at it. They was doing the same exact moves, and the guy who had about 200 pounds on Ru- Ricochet. They, they was going back and forth. Um, you know, and then they brawled. They, they mean, you know, that's all right. Why can't you save that for the main event? All of them brawling instead of these one-on-one matches that are advertised that are, that could be potentially really show ceiling matches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, all this is all right. And this is Triple H, this is why NXT beat AEW. Triple H comes out issuing the open challenge for Raw and SmackDown to come to their show at full sell. That's why the NXT brand beat AEW. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So we'll get to that in a little while. Um, I do like how they promoted Punk's return to the Fox FS1. Yes. They did that throughout the show. I really, I really enjoyed uh, them uh, promoting Punk on uh, WWE backstage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah what did you think of that? Think of, did you watch it? I I didn't I didn't get to watch it. I didn't get to watch it. Um, I know the ratings jumped up to a uh, hundred and eighty thousand. The this this past week it it jumped. Um, let's see. I'll pull this up right here. Let since you're talking about it right there. Um, you know with with CM Punk coming back. You know supposedly quote in quotations to WWE but it's actually Fox because Fox is basically paying him 
Uh, let me pull this up. I just I have it right here in front of me. Here we go. Backstage draws 180,000 views with CM Punk this week. Really? <laughs> How how would you figure that there? You know, I, because I know er, this week everyone was pretty much bitching and moaning and bitching and bitching and bitching and bitching and bitching and bitching and bitching. Are you bitching about CM Punk coming back and not going with a, the WWE? Apparently, to a WWE. Not AEW, but it was actually Fox. Fox is paying the guy, okay? He's making six figures to talk about wrestling, okay? Be an analyst for wrestling. All right, from WrestlingInc.com, Tuesday's episode of WWE Backstage on Fox Sports 1 drew in 180,000 viewers. It's up 80% from last week's 100,000. And what's expected that the viewership would jump due to CM Punk joining the cast at the end of last week's episode. This week's episode ranked 104 on the cable top 150 with a point. 10 rating and the 18 to 49 demographic this is the first time the show has made the cable top 150 congratulations right there you know <laughs> i mean yeah it was, um i didn't watch it tuesday night i watched it wednesday morning mm-hmm. um, i wasn't I just, uh, you know, just couldn't get a chance to do it Tuesday night on the debut, but I did DVR it. Mm -hmm. I watched it the next day, and it was pretty interesting out there. Um, There is a few hints on a one more match, and that was with uh, Seth. Yes. Tim Punk did a really good job of, uh, you know, talking about a potential match, but not saying he's going to do it. You gotta watch it. I can't really explain it. That's just how good he is. Sam Punk is the greatest uh, WWE superstar in the modern era, and that's my opinion. You don't hear he people is. chanting Cena. You don't hear chanting The Rock. You don't hear people chanting Austin Hogan. People chant Sam Punk at any wrestling venue in America or outside of it to this day. No. Nope. Yeah. They want to see CM Punk. They don't want to see anybody else. Right. Exactly. I mean, let me um, let me throw I, this I out here. Employed by Fox. Mm-hmm. We all know that. But I think you know he'll get the bug back, being at least one more match. Right. Right. He he, he will. He is. He's forty-one years old, and yeah, that's not old. But he hasn't been in a wrestling ring in a very long time. And, yeah, people look at Chris Jericho. But Chris Jericho's consistently been wrestling. And he hasn't took no breaks. And nope. But Punk hasn't been in a wrestling ring in quite some time. And when you're 41 and ha- haven't been in a wrestling ring, yeah, it's going to be tough for him. He's going to have to train. He's going to have to, you know, get back to the basics again. Mm-hmm. He is. Will, he he definitely will, is. I, I don't mean to cut you off here, though, but we're getting a lot of response in the chat tonight, man. We got the chat is on fire, man. I want to give a shout out to the chat tonight, man. Everyone tuning in here tonight on uh, the Every awesome. Lee Show Slamming Thursday edition. Let me read off some of these comments real quick here, Chris. Joe loves CM Punk. David C. Russell, hello, Everett Lee and the Chris Rose. Hello, David C. Russell host of Deathmatch Russell Podcast, which you can catch on Podcast City Network. Cheap plug. And then also, we got Kevin, Denver. It's hashtag, it's clobbering time. Yes, it is. It is clobbering time tonight on this Thursday night here on the Slammin' Thursday edition of the Everett Lee Show. And Joe, ha- Joe Hamelin says, CM Punk, CM Punk, CM Punk. So... Basically, when you listen to the Everett Lee show with Everett Lee and the Chris Rose on Thursday nights, it's more like... This voice, this is power. In anybody else's hands, this is a microphone. In my hands, it's a pipe bomb. That's right. We're going to drop them tonight, aren't we, Chris? We are. Pipe bombs all around, baby. That's it. That's it. 
All right. Let's finish up Raw, your rating between, let's do one one to five. Give me a rating mm. this week. Two out of five. Two out of five. I give it a one out of five. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of gave I kind of, I did like the uh, Owens and McIntyre match. But minus the finish, I was really into it. And Seth Rollins and Andrade, I was into that as well. And um, I did call Aleister Black's next opponent being Buddy Murphy a couple weeks ago on the podcast. So I can't wait for that, too. Mm-hmm. We don't have to go into big detail if you want to about it, but that match will, that match will be great. Buddy it, Murphy yeah. and uh, Alistair Black. It will. It it'll be it'll definitely be great. It definitely will. With NXT, I just want to throw this out here. You notice how they've been bringing the NXT UK talent in for stuff? Have you noticed that lately? Yeah, that's, it's pretty that's good. That's part of the NXT brand. Mm-hmm. The UK talent, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. that's the NXT brand thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I do like some of the guys on there. Um, I do not watch their show because there's so much wrestling to watch. I mean, I, here lately, I, have, I haven't watched SmackDown since, like, the second time it debuted on Fox. <laughs> I've just been looking at highlights. Um, yeah. There's just a lot going on. The main ones I watch is Raw, AEW, and NXT. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I watch but I watch I NXT like, UK. You you do like it. UK, I watch the U, the big shows mm-hmm. on the NXT UK. Yeah. Now NXT UK or not UK? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> but you know and I know that you are only half the man that I am, and I have half the brain. I feel like that. I just had a brain. So sorry about that, Chris. <laughs> oh, let's flush that. All right. Okay, like we were talking about earlier. Okay, we had... Talked about NXT. We're talking about Triple H at the end of Raw. Talking about leaving the doors open for this Wednesday for SmackDown and Raw. To bring it. Come. I want you. Doors open. Come. So who opens up the show? We got the man, Becky Lynch. She comes out there and she cuts a hell of a of promo. Rhea Ripley from NXT UK, who's been on NXT here lately, comes out. And I, I basically loved how she had to stare down. And uh, she basically says to Lynch, she says, uh, so you're the man, huh? And it's like, and she looks at him and she's like, um, you know, you're looking for a fight. Do you got the balls? <laughs> the man have any balls? So I loved how she said that. And they go into that match right there. This right here is like a dream match here. Rhea Ripley, she tore it up. She tore it up in, uh, in NXT UK. She was the first NXT UK women's champion. Throw that out there to those who, mm-hmm. who don't watch NXT UK. She beat, uh, I believe it was Tony Storm in the finals there, and um, she ended up uh, capturing that title there. Uh, like Joe right here, I'm going to throw this out here. He's hooked on NXT. Wow, I, I can watch this past show over and over, but dang, like Jericho. Whew. David says, damn chilly night, Everett. Uh, it is right here in Daytona Beach. But let me, uh, Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch, that was just great. Just going back and forth, back and forth. And again, Chris, it ends in a no no contest because of the um, force, uh, Shayna Baszler and her her group, you know, the four horsewomen of NXT, or the horsewomen, whatever you want to call them. I don't even know what to call them, man. I don't even really know their names because I don't see them that much here and there. But they're great at what they do, and they they broke the matchup, and 
Lynch and Ripley fight off, fight them off, and uh, they stand in the ring there looking at each other or just in the ring together. I mean, just great action going back and forth, man. What would you? Th- what's your thoughts on that? It was. It was a non-finish, but an exciting match. I really loved uh, both of the women. It is a dream match, and they kind of teased that in this one. Mm-hmm. Rhea Ripley has a lot of power in the match, doing you know treating the man differently like any of her other opponents. Yeah, and I really enjoyed it. You know, mm-hmm. pushed her Ripley to her limit. Pushed her to the limit. Yeah, she did. Um, yeah, it was. A, it was. A, it ended in a double DQ, but it was what it was. Um, I can't wait to the day we see Becky Lynch and Rhea Ripley have a knockout drag out um, match. Yes. Again. And throughout this invasion angle, that's one good thing. They have teased a lot of uh, good uh, matches, mm-hmm. and can't wait till we see. Uh, one between these two ladies. It's going to be great. It is. It it definitely is going to be great to see him go at it again. But, yeah, like Joe said, ignore. Yeah, he didn't like the ending there, too. It, it, someone should have Someone should have fell. The, someone should have. It should have been a clean victory. That's what it should have been. Kono Reeves versus Matt Riddle. Well, actually, that didn't happen because Ricochet, dude, Dude got the biggest, I mean, he got a big pop, man, coming back, you know, here at NXT. And he, him going against Matt Riddle, oh, my God. <laughs> Tell me your thoughts about this, man. I love this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was a high-octane match. Ricochet and Matt Riddle, um, the styles mess well together. They have a lot of strikes and kicks that are very on target. There was, um, you know, interference in this match, but it was good interference. It was it was very well done. I thought it was a, I thought everything was great. Um, they didn't go, but for a few minutes, so everything started uh, going crazy. But at least two uh, over guys was invading. And it was SmackDown, Cesaro, and Shinsuke Nakamura. Mm-hmm. Really enjoyed it. Uh, the dive that Ricochet did to Cesaro was insane. Diving into the uh, crowd onto Cesaro, it was uh, it was crazy, mm-hmm. crazy, crazy. It was. It, it definitely. That, it definitely well, was. The crowd is. The crowd is really into. Uh, Ricochet coming out there. Um, I'm glad he did. I'm not a big Kona Reeves fan. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, you got Roderick Strong coming out there to attack Nakamura because he is in a triple threat match with AJ Styles, Nakamura, and Roderick Strong. Yes. And then you had the Finn Balor come out and do battle with Matt Riddle, and they'll go one on one at War Games Saturday night. You know, this beatdown was actually all right because they had some people that you would actually want to see come out there. But, I mean... Yeah. Then again, Bill and Ricochet, the way the match was going, a clean finish would have been nice as well. Yeah, the, I mean... Because these two, these two guys are talented. And, uh, yeah, they're both, they're both talented. I really... I really enjoy these two guys. They was going back and forth. I want to see time. more. I want to see more, man. I mean, they 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 work so well in the ring. They work so well in the ring. I, I'll tell you what I like right now. I like how Killian Dane has come back to NXT, and I like the fact that um, with uh, Killian Dane coming back to NXT, what they're doing with the uh, with um, him. And I like how Pete Dunn there and Damian Priest, who used to be Punishment Martini um, in ROH, I, I loved what they're doing. I've never heard Damian talk before, 
and until when they did a video package when he talked i'm like damn this dude is deep he has a deep voice and I just I loved it. And I like this guy could cut a damn. I like to hear him cut more promos, man. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you think your thoughts right there with Dillian? Uh, Dillian. Uh, see, I got brain fart, man, tonight. I don't know where the hell I'm at. <laughs> I'm still marking out over the Matt Riddle ricochet match. <laughs> Killian Dane and Damian Priest, Pete Dunn. What do you think of that right there, what they're doing? Well. The winner of uh, this match, triple threat match at War Games, will um, face Adam Cole at Survivor Series. Is that correct? Yes. The yeah. NXT Championship. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I really enjoy um, all three guys. Uh, I would like to see Damian Priest win the triple threat match and go on to face Adam Cole. Um, his voice is unique. It's different. Uh, his promos are pretty good um, from what I saw in the uh, video package. I haven't seen a full on um, promo from him yet. But from what I saw right there, it was a uh, it was pretty good. Um, I'm really excited to see this triple threat match at War Games. I would like to see uh, Damian Priest come out on top. He he had just came to NXT yes. not too long ago, and you know what better way to push him right into the title picture? Because I think this guy can go with Adam Cole. I, I do it too. Would be a tremendous Damian Priest. I do too. I I believe I believe he can go toe to toe with with. The, Adam Cole. Adam Cole can actually tango with anybody. Should I even use that word right there? Oh. Tango? Should I mean? I mean, dance? What? Yeah. I, hmm? He can he can up with the best. I mean, Adam Cole is one. He is probably a top five best in the WWE. And they, I mean, they, he showed it. I mean, they put him on. Um, Raw and SmackDown against Rollins and Daniel Bryan. So I mean, two two of the top guys in WWE right now is Rollins and Daniel Bryan. And then you got Adam Cole going one on one with them. I mean, their Triple H is very high on Adam Cole. Adam Cole has the promo skills. He's got the move set. He's the mm-hmm. NXT champion. He's got the best. He's got the best guys around him. The Undisputed Era is probably the best group yes. in all of wrestling right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, the guy's got it all. Yeah, I mean, he does. Triple H, if he fucks up, well, he fucks up. I'm not. I, I hate to sound bad about this. WWE fucks up a lot of stuff, but they didn't fuck up the Undisputed Era. No, they didn't. They Undisputed, didn't. Everything has ever done has been awesome. Yeah, it it definitely has. Speaking of Undisputed Era, dude, my favorite tag team match of the night right here. You had the Revival coming back in Undisputed Era. Another dream match, dude. Freaking Revival. I loved the Revival when they were in NXT. The stuff they did with DIY. The stuff they did with the Authors of Pain. Again, like I was referring back to earlier with... You're talking about AOP, the revival. Those guys can stand toe to toe with them, but you got the revival versus Undisputed Air, O'Reilly and Fish. I mean, cheese. Joe right here says, Chris, I absolutely agree. Top five, yes, in my opinion as well. To your Adam Cole, what what you're saying to Adam Cole, he agrees with you, and I agree with it with you too, right there. But. This this match, man. I mean, I, it just it it was great. The with the action going back and forth and stuff, man. Because you had uh, O'Reilly doing, you know, jumping, you know, with the jumping knee, you know, dr- knee drop, the dash as Fish, you know, tags back in and uh, just stuff like that. Great tag going back and forth. The momentum went really great, did it not? 
I loved this match. It was one of my favorite tag team matches I've watched in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, that Dawson and Wilder came out there as heels. And yes. mid-match turned them into baby faces. Yeah. That's yeah. just how good these guys are. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a really good match. Uh, NXT gave them a lot of time to do it. Clean finish. Um, the Revival had to pull out all the stops. The Undisputed Era pulled out all the stops. These two teams had good chemistry. And back to your point, Kyle O'Reilly's a great wrestler. And that knee drop off the top rope was vicious. It looked awesome. Yes. The Revival was even going off the top rope on these guys. They, It was insane. It was an insane match. Um, man, I... I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the match as a whole. Um, I've always been a fan of the Revival. Um, I think they deserve a lot better than what they get in WWE. Um, I mean, you can put a championship on them all you want, but as far, I mean, I really think the only reason they gave them the championships a couple of months ago is because so they wouldn't leave. Mm-hmm. Because their booking has been the best. The Revival and NXT mesh well so much. Like Ricochet and NXT meshes well so much. The Viking Raiders, which we'll get to it later on in the show. Yeah. The crowd is much to them in NXT. And the Revival and Undisputed Era, I was really hoping this match didn't end in a DQ. And actually, a couple of days before NXT, when they announced this match, I commented on WWE's Facebook, please no interference in this match. <laughs> Did they reply back? Forward to more than and uh, it delivered, man. It was a really good match. It had a lot of ups and downs, emotion. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed this match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it was it was great. I I I loved it. I definitely loved it. Kaylee Ray, the NXT UK Women's Champion. I, I'm glad they're bringing her in over here. I I definitely am glad that they're bringing her in. And they're again they're they're giving the UK the UK talent different ones moments here and there because let people know it's yeah the uh, United Kingdom has an NXT division. Because there's still people out there who don't have the network, who still don't watch. But you can watch NXT UK. It does come on at Thursdays, which was today at 3 p.m. If uh, you're home or off from work, you want to watch NXT UK, that's that's the time to watch it right there because of the you know time difference. But she, I... Kaylee Ray, she is vicious, man. I I seen that match that um, where she went against Tony Storm and uh, she won the championship. She she's held on to it for a while. She went up against Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai, I I have mixed feelings about her, about Dakota Kai. I mean, she's great in the ring. Don't get me wrong, she's great in the ring. But I mean, just I'm just I don't really feel her Chris if d- does that even make sense what I'm talking about right there um I'm not a big fan of Dakota Kai I'm, I'm not either to be quite honest with you um and I barely even knew who the champion was the NXT UK champion is mm-hmm. but she is she's pretty good yes. she sells really good um, and of course she uh helped I, Io Shirai last week. Yeah. Um, get the championship. Um, not the championship, the uh, advantage for war games. Um, yeah. And Dakota Kai came out there and tried to help, which set up this match. The following support and sponsor Podcast City Network. City Limits Tap Room, Sports Bar in Deland, Florida, has brew on tap, serve food, the grilled cheese is excellent. 
for upcoming events check out City Limits Taproom on Facebook.com slash City Limits Taproom, Morph T, a comfortable and lightweight 100% polyester t-shirt with illustrated morph characters that, when worn, will make the illustrations seem to come to life. For more of Tony Rodriguez's work, you can see his full line of apparel at teespring.com. Sports Sanity Customs have worked with organizations from custom embroidering polo shirts to jerseys for your kids' baseball team, they do it all. Armed with state-of-the-art equipment and an in-house design team, they are equipped to take on your next project. Visit their website to learn more, sportsanitycustoms.com. Visit Sports Sanity Customs on Facebook.com slash Sports Sanity Customs. Three Count Design offers a wide range of graphic design products, video, photography and other forms of media. Everything from t-shirt designs to websites. Visit Facebook.com slash 3 Count Design for more. Demo Blast Studios, an explosion of imagination. Original artwork, podcasts, video, apparel and more. Visit DemoBlastStudios.com. Visit Demoblast Studios on Facebook.com slash Demoblast Studios, the best family entertainment pro wrestling show in the state of Kentucky. Kentucky Zone Wrestling brings quality family vintage wrestling to a town near you. Kentucky Zone Wrestling offers a ladies division in wrestling and a training school. Kentucky Zone Wrestling is the current longest running southern promotion. Visit Facebook.com slash Somerset Kentucky Zone Wrestling. All supporters and sponsors are brought to you by Podcast City Network. Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. For more of The Everett Lee Show on social media, follow and like The Everett Lee Show on Facebook, The Everett Lee Show, Twitter, at The Everett underscore Lee, Instagram, Everett Lee Show. Audio versions of this podcast and previously released podcast can be found on everettleeshow.podbean.com. Stitcher Radio, The Everett Lee Show, give a rating and comment. Apple Podcast. The Everett Lee Show, give a rating and comment. YouTube, The Everett Lee Show, subscribe to the channel. The Everett Lee Show, your shot of entertainment to the head. You're listening to The Everett Lee Show. But after this, we got the Forgotten Sons and the Viking Raiders. Yeah, what? What's with that, man? I don't get it. Why did they even have that match, sir? I, you know, I thought the same thing at first, but it was a pretty good match. I thought it was a good match. Um, at first, I was skeptical about it, but the fans was. Really into it. Uh, man, I, I thought it was really, really good. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff that went on in this match. It was kind of weird, you know, that it was, you know, happening, but, you know, I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was a pretty good match. Showcased both the uh, teams. Uh, yeah, I really like the Viking Raiders back in NXT overall, though. Yeah, the Viking Raiders, man, they just they they were they were great, and uh, they were definitely great in uh, NXT, man. They they will you know what they did mention that they had unfinished business. That's one thing. They did mention that they had unfinished business. Because when they got rid of the uh, tag titles, when they uh, forfeited the tag titles over. Remember that? No. <laughs> when was this? Forfeited which tag team titles? The NXT. Remember? Right before they went they went up to the main roster, they relinquished. They, yeah. 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 Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, they yeah. Mm-hmm. I think they were just trying to make Back and Raiders still look like a strong team and uh, just didn't want them to lose that momentum, and I guess they just didn't. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying now. They didn't drop the championships. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, they they uh they didn't they didn't uh you know drop the drop the championships there. They didn't. Yeah, so I mean it was it was a decent match. That's all I gotta say. It was just it was it was just decent. But um moving on from that, <laughs> the ladder match with uh Dominic uh Javikovic and uh Adam Cole, baby. What'd you think of that there? Oh man, it was a great it was great. Um Adam Cole worked that leg very, very well. The uh surgically repaired leg. Uh Dominic Dijakovic was climbing the ladder on one leg. I really enjoyed that. The uh choke slam into the ladder looked stiff as hell. Oh God! Adam yeah, Cole did. and Adam Cole hitting the Canadian Destroyer. Man, it was it pulled both guys pulled out all the stops. It wasn't a very long match, which was you know good. You know, having these ladder matches is pretty insane. Anyways, I, I don't know why they would do that on just for an advantage. They could have just had a one on one match, but. Yeah, it was set up for the chaos afterwards. Yes. You know, everybody came out. Everything was going crazy. And then you had Drew McIntyre give the a uh, Claymore kick to Dominic Dijakovic. And then Keith Lee comes out. Drew McIntyre tries to hit him. Pop-up powerbomb. That was an insane pop up powerbomb. God dang. The sit down pop up powerbomb to to uh, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre bounced off that mat. <laughs> he bounced. Man, that was insane. And then you had one half of the Viking Raiders come in, him and Keith Lee stare each other down. And then the big suicide dive onto everybody. You know, this little, uh, you know, after the match, mm-hmm. it looks so much better to have a, a match and then the chaos. It, it just looks a lot better that way. It does. And then you had Adam Cole. You had Adam Cole in the ring by himself. And then uh, out of nowhere, Seth Rollins with super kick. Seth Rollins got some big booze. Big booze at full sell. Yeah, he he did. The fans were chanting, "Seth, Seth's not cool. Seth's not cool," and uh, I liked how they they were chanting for uh, uh, Champa, "Daddy's home." <laughs> I, I love that. Seth's not cool. Yeah, but yeah, Tomasa is one of the most over guys in the company as well. He, he NXT loves him. They love him to death, and. Uh, yeah, him and the, him and uh, Seth Bald to end the show. Man, NXT was really good this week. It was mm-hmm. Really good. It was. It was. It was what ladder match was insane. It was really insane. I, the thing that got me was that choke slam on the ladder. That was that was crazy. I'm gonna go back and watch that just to see that choke slam on the ladder. I that's crazy. I know it. It is it, very short, very very short match, but um, mm-hmm. it, it was a crazy brawl at the end. Uh, Keith Lee and um, Ivar, I believe, is a big Viking Raider. Yeah. Um, the, the double suicide dive on the on Raw SmackDown and NXT. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, two big like that doing suicide dives is crazy in itself, but both of them doing it at the same time was it was crazy. Mm-hmm. It was. It 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 was crazy. It, it just the su- just two suicide dives was just insane. Now you're talking about NXT being great this week. Uh, it took <clears throat> about eight weeks. It took about eight weeks. For for NXT to finally top AEW Dynamite this past Wednesday, it well last night it drew nine hundred and sixteen thousand nine hundred sixteen thousand, 
and uh, a AEW's Dynamite on TNT drew in about nine eight hundred ninety three thousand, and uh, NXT only topped Dynamite by two point six percent, and uh, it's NXT's best view was when it premiered on October second. Because it drew it drew higher ratings than Raw, <laughs> believe it or not, you know, with one point uh, one hundred one hundred seventy nine million and uh, one point six million views, you know. So, but I, I tell you, it just it was you know it still it was still. Uh, you know, it, with the viewership and everything, it was it was better. It was better because they did topple it. But however, AEW still topped NXT because AEW was ranked number eight, while NXT was ranked number fourteen. Which I don't understand. But <laughs> there's the numbers. There's the numbers for that. Rating system is still something uh, new to me because I was too young to understand it back in WCW and WWF. Um, I'll get the hang of all this. I'm just enjoying wrestling. Uh, AEW and NXT has made me enjoy watching wrestling again. Yeah. We'll get to it right here in a minute when we talk about AEW. Yeah, man, we'll, the opening match between Phoenix and Ray Phoenix, well, yeah, Phoenix and Nick Nick Jackson was it, it was insane. It was, it it was insane. It was it was. <laughs> a A W had some solid solid uh, solid stuff. I mean, some they had some really good good matches and and a great. A great promo by the champion. (laughs) Did he not? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Chris Jericho's great, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get to him. But yeah, Phoenix and Nick Jackson, I mean, it was good to see uh, one half of the Young Bucks in a singles match. Just to see how they could do it. Um, this is my first time ever seeing one of these guys in a singles match. It was a very fast pace in the open, a lot of counters. Um, Phoenix had a nice rolling cutter on the outside. Um, Phoenix was great overall in the match. I mean, the crowd was really hot for this match. They was really hot for uh, Phoenix. Um, well, one little P was the super kicks. There was like too many of them, but I mean, it was really, really good, good stuff. A hurricanrana on the outside. Nick Jackson had a German suplex on the apron. They was just going back and forth, and a uh, I thought it was going to be in with the uh, springboard Canadian destroyer, um, but you know. Phoenix picked up the win. Uh, I thought one and a half of Santana and Ortiz would have been in the one-on-one match with uh, Nick Jackson, but I'm glad I got Phoenix. Yeah. It was really, really good. Yeah, well, Nick Jackson. Nick Jackson, if you actually, if you do, uh, if you really do uh, look at it, Nick Jackson actually ended up... uh, Carrying the young bucks when Matt was hurt, he he ended up carrying him when the, when the one of the brothers was hurt there for a while. So yeah. Nick, just I mean the guy can work in the ring, man. God dang, the guy can work in the ring. Nick Nick is um he, I have to say it, he's one he's my favorite out of the two there. I I love what he can do in the ring. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was it was really good to see him in a one on one match. I was excited when they opened the show with these two guys. I was like, All right, let's see what Nick Jackson can do in a one on one match. And he impressed me. It was it was really good. Mm-hmm. 
I like I I did like that change up there. Yeah, um, have you know this tag team here? Have one of them go see what they could do singles, and he did. He definitely did. Britt Baker. What's that? I think that's the way it's trying to do there, just so, you know, give the fans, you know, these guys ain't just tag team guys. No. They can do one-on-one stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they can. He was, going into the, he was going into the next match here, Britt Baker and Akuru Shida. Yeah, Akuru Shida. Just... I, I, I didn't really feel this one because I mean Britt, she's she's great. Okay, she's great. And why have they not decided here to have her chase the belt again? You know, I mean, why not? I'm honestly, you know, Britt Baker has a good look and everything. But Hakura Shida was the better worker out of these two uh, women. I, I I think Britt Baker it could have been good in the uh, Divas division back in the day in WWE. <laughs> That's where I see her. Right. I honestly do. I see her as like a Brie Bella or fucking, I mean, the Bella Twins back in the Divas division where the matches went five, six minutes. That's right. just, you know, I think Britt Baker was put on here too quick. I think Akira Rashida is a good a good wrestler. Her uh, knee strikes are insane for a, a woman. Um, it was really good. It was. Uh, she did pick up the win. And I'm glad she picked up the win because, honestly, you know, Britt, I mean, all the respect to Britt Baker, um, she is not – once impressed me in AEW. Besides the look. <laughs> mm-hmm. Other than that, her abilities remind me of a uh, Divas division before it got to the uh, women's revolution. Yeah. I see you. <laughs> she, I mean... Japanese ta- the <laughs> the Japanese talent is just it they're they're good. I mean, I've not seen too much of uh um Korea. I have not seen too much of her though, but I mean it was it was it was an okay match. It just didn't really like jump out there. It's like, wow, but I just I don't know. It's just I I've seen her get a lot of TV time. And it's like, okay, you're giving this person a lot of TV time. Why don't you have them go after the title, or have her go go against? You know, well, she did go against someone different. So, <laughs> the Dynamite Dozen Battle Royal: the final two participants face off next week in a singles match. Winner gets an AEW Diamond Ring. We had. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Diamond ring, <laughs> or Cody kiss the ring. <laughs> Remember that. Why can't they just have a regular battle royal? I don't have know. One guy standing. I know they get they got to be different, man. You got to be different. You yeah. had this is, this is pretty damn stupid. <laughs> the highlight of the whole battle royal is Billy Gunn. Of course, man. Of course. The, he was the highlight of it. I mean, you, look, look who else you had in there. You had Adam Page, Chuck Taylor, uh, Pockets, I mean, Orange Cassidy, uh, Kip Saban with Penelope Ford. <laughs> I'm sorry. It stuck with me because of Cornette. <laughs> let, let me tell you about Orange Cassidy, Chris. What do I think about him? No, no. Let me let me tell you let me tell you my thoughts. Did I ever tell you about my thoughts about Orange Cassidy? No. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. When they did when they did uh, all in 
or no, not all in. It was the uh, the first AEW pay per view they did, where they had the the uh, battle royal there, and when it was him and Tommy Dreamer standing in the ring, and he was doing the kicks to Tommy. I said to myself, I yeah. looked over, I forgot who was there with me, and I said, really? I was like, who? And, and the crowd, I was, I was like, the crowd loves this? I was like, what the heck is this? The guy ha- is standing there with his hands in his pockets, and he's kicking, play kicking, like, Tommy Tommy Dreamer. I, I just, I just was like, really? And I was like, I just didn't get it. And then, you know, he gets eliminated. But uh, same thing happened here in this one too. <laughs> I mean, I just, I mean, that's that's his thing. People love him. I just, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too in, too into his gimmick. I want to see what else he can do besides that. I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for that. But yeah, he got his, he got his butt thrown over the ring. <laughs> I was laughing about that when he kind of did that. But Jimmy Havoc, Jungle Boy, Marco Stunt, Pentagon Jr., Sony, Sonny Kiss, and Joey Janela, and MJF, and Mr. Ass, Billy Gunn. Yeah. Jim, Jimmy Havoc with... Yeah, all you got to do is throw him over the top rope. You don't have to have a fucking staple gun. <laughs> yeah, I was, to, I was about to ask you. Oh God. I don't know why they have to do all that stuff. I mean... I don't even like Jimmy Havoc all that much, to be quite honest with you. But, uh, yeah, that was just all messed up. The whole Battle Royal was. And I was cooking food during the Battle Royal after I heard the rules. Yeah. It was just weird. It was just weird. The last two remaining win in a Battle Royal, it's one person remain. That's the whole point of a Battle Royal. Right. I understand the age is trying to be different. But this is a little too much, and I, and by the looks of the crowd, I don't even think it was clearly explained to them either. No, no. When MJF was walking away, the crowd was like, "Why? <laughs> Why are you walking away?" Yeah. But um, but we do get a um, Adam Page and uh, MJF match out of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, we do, we definitely do get that at the end there. Joe, welcome back. After that little technical difficulty, he wished that Billy Gunn would have went on to be part of the final two. Not Jimmy, ha- not a Jimmy Havoc fan either, at all. So he he agrees with you right there. Yeah, D- Billy Gunn was the yeah. highlight of that man. He still has it, man. <laughs> I, lo- I love it. You know who's be besides. Uh... Marco Stunt, Jimmy Havoc, My Dog Pockets, you know who should be in there? Who's that? <laughs> the fucking Chris Rose, baby. He should. He should. You should get the Chris Rose in AEW. I can see you go up against MJF, man. <laughs> Joe says Billy Gunn will have to... Have it at sixty plus. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. Billy Gunn just yep. it impressed me. I mean, Billy Gunn. I mean, Billy Gunn. Um, he works, you know, backstage with the talent, and it was really good to have that. Uh, that uh, you know, that person in there as popular he as he is in the uh, Battle Royal. Mm-hmm. So it was it was really good to see Billy Gunn back. The guy looks fantastic. His son is also a wrestler. Yes. Um, the guy's done really good himself, you know? He has. I'm glad to see Billy Gunn happy. A lot of guys who's went there, like Dean Malenko, Arn Anderson, Jim Ross, Tony Schiavone, they're all rejuvenated. They're all happy again, and I'm glad to see that. I am, too. I am, too. Joe says, hashtag the Chris Rose anywhere would be too sweet. Oh, I'm too sweet in you, Joe. I'm <laughs> holding the hands up. You just can't see it. Uh, but, um, yeah, it's good to see, because you can hear Jim Biden, Jim Ross's voice, that he is genuinely happy. He is. Being AEW. 
He is. He he definitely is. He definitely is happy being AW. We talked about him throughout tonight, and the champion is here, and he has a little bit of a. Uh, Well, how come my drinking son? a little bit of the bubbly? There it goes. A little bit late there. Uh, so there it is. Yep, yep. So Jericho, Jericho, and uh, Jake ha- Hager is out in the ring there. <laughs> what did you think about every time Jericho went to say sorry? <laughs> Put the mic in front of Jake. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> yeah, I- Jericho was about going off on a temper tantrum. Or that was that kind of reminded me of a '97 Jericho, '98 Jericho with his temper tantrums. And he was trying to get it out. He goes, um, um, and then he just gave the mic to Jake Hager. I'm sorry. And that was just throughout the promo. That's just you know, Jericho being Jericho, mm-hmm. being serious and. And people laugh at the same time. Uh, Jericho is the biggest star in AEW. He's the best. He is the GOAT in my eyes, and that is a shoot. He is who I I, I idolize, and he is the guy who uh, made me want to be a wrestler. So I am a big fan of Jericho. And he teased the big announcement, but overall he's like, I'm not going to do it in front of Indianapolis. I'm going to do it in Chicago where they got two baseball teams, a hockey team, and an NFL team, and you people have nothing. I thought that was great. And then uh, SCU interrupts and got a big ovation. Um, And I believe I told you this last week about Scorpio Sky and Chris Jericho. I hope they have a one-on-one match down the road. Yes, you did. I believe I said that. Someone and must have been listening to you, man. Yes, <laughs> and Jericho um, next Wednesday. And I thought Scorpio Sky hung with Jericho on the microphone. I was impressed. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it, he, he's great. I like how Jericho was like, oh, you don't want a title match, huh? Oh, you don't deserve, You know what? You're going to get a title match. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Oh, that was funny. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm really, I'm really ready for it. Like, Jerry, uh, man, that I could watch that promo over and over. I could watch any Jericho promo over and over. Yeah, I just liked it. Um, SCU is a, has a bunch of uh, veterans as well. Yeah, they uh, do. Scorpio Sky, Larry, and the Fallen Angel. It was all a very good segment. It was. I really enjoyed it. I really, uh, I really enjoyed every bit of it. I did too. I'm I, ready for the match. I'm ready a for really it. good match. I'm ready for it next week. I definitely am. And Joe agrees. Scorpio Sky and Jericho will be a five star match, and it will be. It will be a five star match. Yes. It definitely will be. Luchasaurus, I'm glad to see he's back after injury. He's back, and he does a quick squash match with uh, Peter uh, Avalon, the librarian. Yeah. Quick one, two, three, that's it. Great. You know, let's let's move on now. I'm glad that they had the squash match. Now we're on to Private Party versus uh, Santana and Ortiz. Ever, I got you're beating around the bush, buddy. What about the damn Dark Order promo video? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That <laughs> what? Was, I, um, Everett Lee, I, I shaved my head. I don't have a lot of hair up there. Neither do if I. If I did, I was gonna pull that all the fuck out. <laughs> wow. I, when I oh, saw it, oh, oh. when I saw it, this is what I thought of. It looks like I got attacked by gonorrhea. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> when I seen it, I, I thought this was. Anal. Yeah, it just was. It just didn't. It didn't, you know. The Dark Order. You said Dark Order. Here we go. 
You're not afraid of the dark, are you? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I got them all, man. Just about got them all. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every time we talk about... What you, you know, the dark order sucks. I'm sorry. I suck. They're not a good tag team. <laughs> They're not. Nobody's, in, nobody's into this team. No. And they got snake bit by their rival at that double or nothing. The lights went out and these guys appeared to no fucking reaction whatsoever. No. No reaction. Nothing. And that's one thing they does too much of is the lights out and then someone appears. They do that way too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Way. I didn't. When, when, uh, when. Only- that's ever worked for anyone is the Undertaker. Yeah, yeah. Joe says that he really liked. He did really like. He really likes Private Party. Wow, wow. I agree with you, man. I agree with you. Yeah, Private Party. That's my favorite tag team right there in AEW. Um, hmm. Yeah. Yeah, both 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 the tag teams in this match is my favorite. Santana and Ortiz and Private Party. Um, I really like the how they kept Mark Quinn in their corner and gave them the stalling suplex double team move. Did you see that? Well, they yeah. kept switching out the suplexes. That was different, and I really, really liked it. Um, Santana and Ortiz looked really great in this match. Private Party looked really good as well. Mm-hmm. And, of course, at the end, they hit the gin and juice for the win. The best double team move in wrestling. Oh, God, right yeah. Right now, the Herkarana into the RKO. Uh, it flowed very well as they went into the finish. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. I did, I did too. Great, man. I really, really did enjoy that. Kenny Omega is working out. I thought that was funny right there. <laughs> I, I I liked how they how they did that one right there, and Joe says so underrated. They are very good, and I actually like Santana and Ortiz. I I do too. They're 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 really good in the ring. What they do too, got to give them credit there. I'm with you guys. Both these two teams are my two favorite in AEW, and they are they're 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 great. I love Private Party. I love Private Party. It took me a few weeks because after I seen what they could do when they got to the tag team finals, when I saw that there, I said, this team right here. And like I talked about with uh, someone before, and you probably mentioned this, AEW has a great tag team division. They have a great tag team division. You want great tag team wrestling? AEW. You want great women's wrestling? NXT. You want nonsense and BS, you got raw. You want just a dog mascot running around and you're and you watch it in public and you're embarrassed to be a wrestling fan, SmackDown. So you got everything right there. Do you not? <laughs> yeah, I mean AEW's tag team division is uh, really good, and so is NXT's. Both yeah. of the shows are kind of the same, mm-hmm. um, except he doesn't have uh, Chris Jericho or Cody, and uh, that's the difference maker in the ratings. Um, Jericho's a bigger star than anybody, and so is Cody. They're more familiar with They have a familiar fan base because... Both of those guys was on Raw and SmackDown for a long time. Yes. And that's the difference in the shows. Um, yeah. yeah what did you think about the main event? Oh, damn. I knew... I was buzzing all week about this. I was buzzing all week about this main event right here. John Moxley versus Darby uh-huh. Allen. I mean, before even before the match gets rolling and starts... You see footage of Alan skateboarding around, you know, with a body bag and it has mocks on it. I thought that was great. I love the body bag thing. 
He brought a body bag because he basically is going to kill Moxley and get him in the bag. And I love the crowd. Did you like the cr- the crowd surfing with the bag? I love that. I thought that was awesome. And I loved how they brought Darby out in the in the in the uh, in the body bag, and he comes out. I I love that. I just I thought that was fantastic. Yeah, I, I thought that was all cool. The, the uh, video package and everything they did with that was uh, was great. Yeah, um, love the match. I liked how you know Moxley came to the crowd to get in the ring, and they the whoever the cameraman was did it perfectly. Because out of nowhere, in the corner of your eye, you see a big suicide dive to start the match. Before the even match even started, actually, they brawled into the crowd. Um, then finally the match started, and they went all out. I loved how um, Darby went for a cross body, and Moxley just stood there. <laughs> I really yeah. enjoyed that. Um Darby Allen taking it to Moxley looked really good. The crowd was fifty fifty for both guys. Yeah, they were. They they love both of these guys. Great, great action. Um, I think the timing though was off in the match because they brought in the body bag, and uh, nothing happened with it. They didn't do nothing with the body bag. Yeah, but um. I really think here lately, the past two weeks, the uh, main events on AEW had went really, really quick. And I noticed that last week with the tag team match and this week with the uh, singles match because um, you could just see the timing was off. And uh, But, you know, then again, they're new, but they're going to have to fix that. Um, they have, they've had plenty of enough shows to do that to fix the timing in the main events. But that's with everybody else before them. They're going to have to fix their time as well. But back to the match, the coffin drop into the uh, rear naked choke was phenomenal. God dang, yeah. You got me right there. <laughs> that that was that was great. That was that was great. Yeah, I really enjoyed and then the dirty deeds off the top rope for the finish was crazy. Yeah. Um, Jeez. I'm sure a lot of the fans would have liked seeing these guys in a match like Moxley had with Omega, but there's not enough story for these two guys to have a match like that. But for what it was, a great, I thought it was a good main event. Mm-hmm. I did too. I thought it was a great main event. Everyone was buzzing about this all week. And when it finally happened, it happened. And this was great. It was, these guys tore it up. And what a awesome main event. I was talking with Joe in the chat here, Chris. I want to put throw this out here that... He uh, he said that he felt bad for Roman. Maybe he needs to venture NXT. And I, I, I mentioned, yeah, he would have a better booking there. <laughs> and he said SmackDown is pretty awful for him. And uh, I was like, well, Fox wanted Roman for SmackDown, and that's what they did. And he mentions that all they have there is Brian and Wyatt, and that's it. That's one thing I wanted to ask you. Uh, I'll ask you here in a minute, right um, about SmackDown this past SmackDown, but um, AW, we didn't even do, give a rating for NXT right before we jumped off, jumped into AW. Let's give it a rating. NXT yeah. one to five. NXT one to five, uh, three out of five. Okay. AEW one one to five. Um, four out of five. Um, I know the uh, ratings came out and said what it said, but I enjoyed AEW 
a lot more than NXT. Okay. I give both shows a four out of five because both of them stepped it up this week. I mean, really stepped it. AEW's main event, that was great. It was People were waiting for this. You got that main event there. NXT, you kind of knew like some kind of invasion angle, though, but you had some really good... NXT had a really strong opening this week. Becky versus Rhea. You have you had uh, the revival, undisputed error. You had Matt Riddle, Ricochet. Great strong opening, and you kind of knew where they were going to go with this and stuff. But yeah, I I give I give both a four out of five this week. I give them both. Joe gives NXT a five, and he says AEW as long as Jericho is the man. The and they're a five. So he gives it a five. He gives both shows a five out of five this week. So thank you, Joe, for the feedback. And he really did love AEW this week a lot. A lot of people loved AEW AEW this week a lot. A lot of people said AEW was, they really loved it a lot this week. NXT was a solid program because you kind of knew what they were doing because of uh, coming up this weekend, Survivor Series. So you kind of knew that, but um, let me let me ask you, what are your thoughts about the obvious Universal Championship getting changed? To blue? Yeah. <laughs> Is it not obvious? <laughs> Typical WWE stuff. Yeah. Um, we talked. We, I think we talked about that last week. I, I, well, I we may have talked about it with, with I think, somebody else. Yeah, you know. you talked. We didn't talk about it last week. We didn't talk about it because okay. we we do this on Thursdays, and it happened that Friday. So we didn't take, get to talk about right. it, Chris. We didn't get to talk about okay. it. Let me let me get your thoughts on the big change to the Universal okay. Title this uh, this past Friday. <laughs> Oh, I must have talked about it with someone else. My mistake. No, that's but, fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, they ain't, uh, as long as it wasn't red on SmackDown, still. <laughs> right. So uh, that's a. Point. <laughs> yeah, that's just. But I, <laughs> by its character, the theme, they mm. could have made it a little bit more edgier than just blue. Yeah, they could have. Uh, they could have. Maybe they had some like shrunken heads hanging from the belt or something like that. Make it kind of look like one of those uh, shag, shag lamp um, things, you know. But you know, have it on the belt there with the heads, the shrunken heads, severed heads, something like that. Yeah, oh, something just a little, little different. And you know, I didn't watch SmackDown Friday. Mm-hmm. Honestly, look up anything about SmackDown. You didn't miss much, man. To be uh, quite honest with you. Mm-hmm. Just, um... Yeah. Yeah, it just... I saw the uh, WWE show and... Um, CM Punk shit all over SmackDown, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> I heard something, but uh, what the, what did he say? He just uh, he just uh, sit on the uh, Roman Reigns segment uh, yeah. with well well Baron Corbin and uh, Baron Corbin's segment with uh, the uh, mascot dog coming down to the ring. That was really weird. Yeah, <laughs> and it was. I mean, just, um, talked about how it was garbage and uh, that WWE is the same as when I left, but. <laughs> I, I kind of disagree with that. Yeah. Um, I thought it was a lot better when CM Punk was around. So. Mm hmm. Yeah. Joe, Joe mentioned, he said that the, uh, the only plus is that it isn't red and they should have had made, made it suit the fiend. He does like the, uh, the side plate, you know, for the title. 
Awful show, awful. Can't stand Corbin, awful. Sorry, a lot of people can't stand that guy. That guy looks like a, um, what do you call it, uh, one of those guys that stands outside at medieval times before you go see the show. That's what he reminds me of right now. <laughs> he does. Yeah. But um, you didn't miss much with uh, with SmackDown besides the dog and the, the change of the belt blue. So they, they reported that about the belt getting changed blue earlier earlier this year talking about switching titles from having the WWE title go go to Raw and the Universal go to SmackDown and then just change. But people said, well, the Universal title's red. How's that going to fit on the blue brand? What are you change to strap blue? Well, yeah. <laughs> they turned it blue. That's all they did. <laughs> he, Joe on the chat there says, we'll continue to drag ratings do not like him he does not like corbin i i get it a lot of people does not like corbin but um chris pretty pretty interesting stuff we have going on especially this week and on the on the what we discussed on the program tonight man what do you think yeah, I mean, we got Survivor Series coming up, and, um, you know, it's about time to make those predictions here soon. Yeah, that's... I think what we've talked about has been pretty great. Um, I still think that, in my eyes, AEW did better than NXT. I really did like NXT, though. The main event really stood out to me. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I really enjoyed AEW as a whole. They They did some different stuff on there. Besides the... Dark Order promo video and the Battle Royal. I thought it was all pretty good stuff. Yeah, yeah it 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 definitely it definitely was it definitely was. We will have to not next week. Next week, I just want to mention this: people that go back and watch this video and listen to the audio portion of this podcast. <clears throat> Excuse me, I was like podcast. <laughs> <laughs> because next week, the Chris Rose and Everett Lee will not have a show next week because it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> we'll be co- no, and I'll be eating a bunch of turkey and a bunch of ham and a bunch of other food and shit, and I'll be drinking my bubbly <laughs> hey. and. I'm having my family as well, after all that, so. Drinking a little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to. What's that? That's what's going to be happening next week. Yeah. But, um, we'll but be back. We'll yeah, we'll be back. We'll, we'll be back. back. We not will next be week. back next week. We, I mean, not next week. And after th- the week after Thanksgiving, Slamming Thursdays will be coming back, and when we do come back the following week, like you said, we will we will review Survivor Series for that for that uh, episode. That is a definite because I want to I want to get your thoughts on Survivor Series, and I know you'd love to hear my thoughts. So after not. When we come back after Thanksgiving, the beginning of December, right there, I think it is. Let me pull up the damn calendar. I, I've i had a messed up day. Just a lot of stuff has just went on and off and just wrong and just OMG moments tonight. And I felt like I should have got kicked in the balls a few hundred times. It just felt like that. But um, December 5th. We'll be back December 5th for Slamming Thursday, and we'll be discussing about Survivor Series, and you'll get to hear our thoughts on that right there. And during that week, which has been going on with WWE and AEW. So it's going to be great. It's going to be great. And I do want to mention before we do close... 
I want to thank uh, Podcast City Network, your top source for independent podcasting. Head over to podcastcity.net where you can check out the Everett Lee Show, Russell Popcast, Deathmatch Russell Podcast, Imaginarium with Scott and Todd and Super Radio Brothers, and much, much more. Best Friends Show Podcast, a Chris Carnish Show, and Final Score, and much, much more podcast right there around podcastcity.net. Follow them. Give them a like over on Facebook, Podcast Scene Network, and send them a tweet on Twitter at Podcast Scene Net. Subscribe to their YouTube channel, Podcast Scene Network, to watch back video portions of the Everett Lee Show podcast. And follow them on Twitch, Podcast Scene Network. Speaking of Everett Lee, Everett Lee Show right here on Facebook.com slash Everett Lee. Click that thumbs up. Send me a tweet on Twitter at the Everett Lower Score Lee, Instagram, Everett Lee Show, and you can hear audio portions of this podcast and previous release podcast over on YouTube, Everett Lee Show YouTube channel, Stitcher Radio, download that app for your smartphone and tablet, iTunes, and Podbeam, everettleeshow.podbeam.com. So be sure to download that app and Stitcher and iTunes and listen to the Every Lee Show on the go, yo. And that's all brought to you by Podcast City Network, your top source for independent podcast. Tell me, the Chris Rose, what do you have coming up this weekend? Uh, actually, the, the Chris Rose has zero wrestling shows this weekend. I'm going to spend some time with the children, uh, with my girlfriend, with my family. Um, but I've been hitting the gym hard this week. Um, been a pretty good week, and I guess, uh, you know, the Chris Rose is going to have the weekend off this week from uh, wrestling. But I'll be back next week, uh, next Saturday in Shopville, Kentucky, November 30th. KGW will be at the Shopville Gymnasium. The Chris Rose will be in action at that time. Bell time is at 7.30 p.m. Um it's a tribute show to uh, Sully Larkin, who lost his mother um, last year. And this is a tribute show to her. My condolences. Um, I want to throw that out there. My condolences for, yeah. for the loss. Uh, he, was, he was really close to his mom. He did a lot of things with his mom. Um, he's going through a hard time with it. And this is a tribute show to her. To raise money for a, uh, you know, a funeral and everything. And I was wrong on the timeline. She died earlier this year. (laughs) Um, My condolences to him still. um, A true friend in the business. I've known him ever since I started. And everybody needs to come on out and see the Chris Rose in action and all the other talent as well. It's going to be a good show. We have a lot of uh, new faces that's going to be at the show. If you go on the Kentucky Zone Wrestling's Facebook, you will see everybody new and everybody you see every weekend. All right. Thank you, the Chris Rose, and uh, please go out and support Kentucky Zone Wrestling and the Chris Rose. And that is it for the Everett Lee Show tonight. Everyone have a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you back right here on December 5th for the Everett Lee Show Slamming Thursday edition. Peace.